over the years I found that not only the time of the year you put a scrape in, but where you put it in is very important. We're about to show you how we do mock scrapes and how we deal with community scrapes. What time of year we use what product. Hey guys, it's September 14th. Tomorrow's the big opening day of bow season. The day we've all been waiting for all year. It's after work. I'm not going to hunt this spot tomorrow. This is a spot I'll probably hunt over the weekend. Maybe in a couple of days. Who knows? It all depends on what I get for activity here. What I am here for is there's a giant community scrape that gets hit every time the deer come through. So all I'm going to do right now is introduce to the deer in this area a brand new deer or group of deer however you want to look at it so as we know the most important part of any scrape any scrape breeding scrape frustration scrape or even a community scrape is this overhanging branch with if you find a scrape without that walk away from it don't hunt it, don't even pay attention to it. Discount it altogether because that's going to be made by a young of the year deer or a two year old who's just not sure what he's really doing during the rut. He's just doing what comes natural, but it really doesn't mean anything. So always find this overhanging branch. Now, the first thing we're going to do with this overhanging branch is we're going to apply our black widow branch butter to it. Now, branch butter is a preorbital and forehead gland gel that you put on these overhanging branches. You don't need a lot, guys. When you open this up, you'll know. It's quite potent, and it's very thick. So you squirt a little bit out, and you place it on the bottom of your stick like this. And Because remember, when they're rubbing their forehead, and they're rubbing their orbital gland on these trees is not really a goopy mess coming out it's just a tiny bit of scent you gotta remember these deer are so sensitive to smell so they're going to use all of these branches including this tall one here they'll stand on their rear legs to hit that you've seen that in some of the pictures i've posted so it's not a big deal you want to hit this one so we have our we have our little stick with our gel on it. I've got gloves on. You see this? I'm wearing gloves. Always wear gloves. I've seen these things go completely cold and dead when people touch these with their bare hands. So always wear some type of glove on your hand. So we're going to take this large branch and we're going to take our gel and we're just going to rub it on there just like that. Nothing fancy. Just a little bit. Same with this one. We're going to come down. We're going to rub that right on there right on here. Still quite a bit on the stick, put that on. And we're just touching these, and that's just all you really need. If you feel you need more, use more. That's fine. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna hurt. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more on myself because I have some more branches I wanna have. Like I said, it's, the residue will stay on that stick for a while, so. Get these, all of this stuff, because you know they're just going to come and they're going to rub their heads on all of this stuff. Well, there we go. We just introduced another deer, preorbital pre and forehead gland to the overhanging branches. That's step one. Now that that's out of the way, take that stick and remove it from the area. Done. All right. So, seeing it's September 14th. It's not even pre-rut yet. These deer aren't really thinking about breeding. We're going to forego putting any type of hot doe scent in there. That's just not going to, it, it's not going to scare the deer. It's not going to make them wary. It, they're just not going to pay attention to it. It's not going to, it's not going to help you in any way. Save your expensive uh, extra scents for pre-rut. So. What I am going to put in this scrape right now is I'm going to put in some Scrape Master. 
If you don't have Scrape Master, you can't find it, you can go online and order it. Or if you have Extreme Interest, Extreme Interest will also work. Here's our Scrape Master, and here's our Extreme Interest. Either one will do at this point in time. You're basically just trying to get these guys completely interested in this and introducing that was not Sasquatch, that was a cow. You're going to try to get these guys interested in this new deer that's here. Both of these bottles contain scent from deer that don't exist in this area, obviously. So, by introducing either one of these into that, it's going to make them come in. So, at this point in time, either one of these two will do. They'll just cause the deer to be more interested in this scrape because there's now different deer. So it's all up to you at this point in time, before pre-rut, is to put whatever you want in there. I'm going to put Scrape Master in just because I like the name Scrape Master because I think it's cool. Once again, Black Widow is extremely potent. You don't need a ton of it in your scrape. If you want to dump it all in there, that's up to you. I don't think it's necessary but go right ahead if you feel you need to. That's all you need. Whew. And you can smell it. And my camera person can smell it also. <laughs> all right. Now that you've done that, You've added your scrape master. You got your preorbital gland on this this scrape. Black Widows come out with this brand new product. These are snap caps, inner digital gland snap caps. All right. Basically, this is the gland that's between the hooves of a, a, of a deer. By taking this snap cap out. This is how these work. <laughs> Take the snap cap out. As you can see, it's shaped like a bullet. Take it. Come over here. All right. So, how these work is you're going to take this and you're going to press it down into the center of your scrape and then you're going to pop the top off. That's why you need these gloves because this is this snap cap stays in the center of your scrape and it, it's a gel so it slowly will release scent of another deer's interdigital glands. It's an ingenious idea that way you don't have to keep coming back here all the time. That scent stays with it. Same with the preorbital gland that we put on there. That gel will soak into these tree branches and stay for a long period of time. Works out really well. Now, with the Scrape Master spray that I just put in there, that's eventually going to dissipate. So they've come out with this other product. It's not new, but they have this other product that you're really going to like. Especially those guys like me who like to set these up and not come back for a long period of time. And that's these Scrape Master beads. These are time-release beads, as you can see. They're just little uh, gelatin beads with Scrape Master scent inside infused into them. So what you do is you take this and you dump these all in here, okay? And over time, they time release that scent for a long period of time. So you, don't, you can set this scrape up right now with Scrape Master, your preorbital gland, and your interdigital gland scent, and you don't need to come back until October 31st. It's sitting there, it's getting hot, these deer are hitting it, and once one deer hits it, they'll all start hitting it. And then every time they come by, they hit it anyways because it's a community scrape. The difference between this scrape here and some of these other scrapes, there's different, there's different types of scrapes. And you're going to see a lot of different ones while you're in the woods. You're going to see 
frustration scrapes, you're going to see a breeding scrape. You're going to also see these big ones like this, the community scrape, where they all use it. The difference between all these scrapes is slight. Some of them get revisited and some don't. Frustration scrapes, you'll find those and sometimes they won't even be under an overhanging branch. They're just there because they're in a staging area. They're getting antsy. They want to go out and see the does that are in the field, but they don't dare to go out because it's too light. And they scrape and they rub on things and you'll find all of those places. That's how you know you're in a, in a staging area is all that activity. On this road right here, this road snakes up and goes around back to the other side of the mountain on that over, over to the uh, east. On this road, the, the bucks travel back and forth. And during the rut, you'll find 15 or 20 of these small scrapes about the size of a pizza, a large pizza, underneath some of these small overhanging branches. They'll revisit those occasionally. But generally, those are just done to mark his path of travel during the rut on an area that he's finding a lot of does. He's going to stop. He's going to scrape it. It's sometimes out of frustration. Sometimes it's just because. And they're always on areas that they're crossing these roads, at least here. Your deer may be different. Deer do different things in different areas. Then you have these. These are your big, when you find these, you think you found the mother of all scrapes. They're giant scrapes. Like I said, this one here is about five feet long by about three feet wide. Overhanging branch. Gets, this one gets visited all the time. Every couple of days, there's at least one or two deer hitting this. Does, bucks, fawns, doesn't matter. They stop, they urinate, they check the preorbital scent on these branches and they move on. It's a great place for a stand. If you want a place where you're going to get a chance at a nice buck or a decent doe, this is a great place to set up. And by putting in your Black Widow products, you increase your odds because now you've created a place that's it's a curiosity area. They want to know who the new guy in town is and they're hoping to meet him. And a lot of times by using this stuff, you end up increasing some of the daytime activity because when they come through at night and they're not meeting up with him, they're going to come through the day to try to meet up with him. And a dominant buck is going to want to meet this new guy, especially once the rut comes. If he keeps coming back to this thing and he's smelling another dominant or subdominant buck using this, he's on the list to get a butt kicking. So that's why I like to use it. Okay, now about October 29th. October 28th, somewhere in there, I'm coming back here. And I'm going to put in more Scrape Master. I'm going to just touch up my preorbital gland. And then I'm going to put this in. This is my Black Widow Hot and Ready Triple X. This is dough and heat. This stuff will fire up a pre rutted site like nothing else. As soon as these guys come through this, community scrape and they smell that there's a dough and heat now that's going to fire them up and they're going to keep coming back through they're going to cut through in the morning nothing they can't find her they're going to cut back through in the evening nothing they're going to keep coming back and forth especially if you sneak in here when they're not here and you hit this and freshen it during the rut i'm going to freshen that scrape up probably once every three days with this as long as i can get in here safely without getting detected that's the key to get in here without being detected. This is a great spot. This is a hot spot that's between two feeding areas and a, an absolute gold mine of a spot right beyond this knob is a brook. It's really flowing slow right now, but there's pools in it with a lot of water. And this year, there's no water anywhere. That spot has, is being absolutely pummeled by deer. So if I can come in and hit this in the afternoon, say like noontime at my lunch break, or you know, at some point in time during the middle of the afternoon when the deer are off bedding, hit that thing, get out of here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put up a camera right here watching this site. So then I can tell. I'm gonna come back in here 
every few days if I can, if I can get in here without being detected, in the middle of the day, noontime, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, somewhere in that vicinity, and touch that up. And then when I come in, when I can hunt during a weekend, like most of us working guys, they should be looking for this lady right here. So the only other way you could do it different is I guess you could put a dripper. I don't like putting drippers on overhanging branches. It's just a recipe for disaster because if you ever see how much they thrash these things, your dripper is going to end up off in the bushes. So it's up to you if you want to put one up higher above this branch that's that's your own business but I don't I just come in there's a logging road right here I put on my rubber boots I come in with my hunting clothes put the stuff in and I get out I throw three three squirts and I'm gone I don't check the camera I don't do anything squirt gone I can check that camera when I come in to hunt it or when I'm leaving Now guys, when you're going to do a mock scrape, you have to choose the right spot. This place that we have it here, we have a, a major, old, there's an old tote road behind the camera. That's used all the time by deer coming up and down. They also cut through here where I am to go down to the brook. Right over here, there's a marking post rub. And I know what deer's making it. But that's a story for a different time. There's a couple of beds up on this little knob right here that they use in the evening when they're coming back and forth from their food source towards the water. This is a no-brainer spot to put a scrape in, and they're going to use it. The other thing I want you guys to always remember, and some guys will try to do this and not think, we're in New England. Most of your scrapes that you're going to find, whether they're a breeding scrape or a community scrape, they're going to be under a hemlock or a cedar. Sometimes you'll find them under beech, oak, depending on what you have, especially if you're in an area with, that's dominated by hardwood. But where I hunt, hemlock and cedar are the, the main overhanging branch trees that you'll find. This is a perfect spot. You can see there's another logging road that cuts down behind me. There's a trail that comes up through, so this is a great spot. Just always find a really good overhanging branch that's just about five feet to six feet tall. I'd go right around five feet because that will give you the most deer that are going to use it. Do your scrape in a spot like this. They feel safe in a place like this. They like it here. Trust me, there's sign everywhere. If you can help it, try to open up one that's already been made. If you can't, Always pick a spot that looks like there should be one on, a, on or near a trail, near a spot that you want to set up a tree stand or a tent blind. That's what I do. All right, so we've done the community scrape. That one's all set. We ain't going to go back to that one for a while. Here's another spot. There's a spot here behind us. There's a hemlock tree that goes up with a beautiful maple right behind it. Perfect cover. Great place for a tree stand. I'm not getting in a tree stand, but it's a perfect spot. We're going to use this as an example of a place you might want to set up a stand. The prevailing winds here come from that way and go that way. So you want your stand there. So here's a great place for, for a mock scrape. You have an overhanging branch, branches. There's a marking post rub about... 10 yards from here, right over here. So, there's deer trail cutting this way and one right behind it. It's a perfect place for one. There's deer trails cutting all over the place in here. So, we're going to do this. We're going to kick up the ground. We're going to get all this leaf litter out of this, this scrape. We're going to make it look really good. in mind I don't do mock scrapes until October I never put mock scrape in until about October 15th that's when the pre-rut really gearing up that's when they're doing all of this 
by putting this in here on September 14th, I'm making a scrape. They may hit it, they may not, but it'll be here. So come that time in October 15th, all I gotta do is come back and get this thing charged up and then they'll come and hit it hopefully. With these overhanging branches, it'll get a visitor or two. We don't know how active it'll get, but this is basically for demonstration purposes so you guys know how to do a mock scrape. So, we've got our ground all marked up here. It looks like a big giant buck has come in here and made all kinds of mess. So my next step is, once again, your inner digital gland, put that in, time release, we've been over that, it's a time release capsule on there. You push it down in the center of that, pop that top off, and there you go. You have inner digital gland that's already starting to spread its smell in there. And whenever it rains or you get a dew in the morning, it's going to keep making that happen. It's going to continue the process. For demonstration purposes, I am going to put one in here. See, it's the, the scrape that was down there. It already had one in it. So, we don't want litter. So, here we go. See our cap? You put the pointy end down. I think you already figured that part out. So there we go. We're going to put that right in the center, press it down in, and then you grab the top and you pull it out. Just like so. Now that's in there, it's ready to go. The next step we're going to put in there, the next step we're going to do on this, once again, as you see, I'm wearing gloves. Next step is the branch butter. Now seeing that this isn't an already active site, there's probably no pre-orbital scent on these. So by adding this, now you're really adding a lot of reality. So let's grab a stick. This one will do. We'll put our inner digital, I mean our, our pre-orbital on there, our branch butter. Here we go, she's on the stick. All right, grab our cap. You don't want to put this back in your pocket without the cap on it. No, oh, cap's over here. You don't want to put this back in your pocket without the cap on it, trust me. Your wife will kill you when you come home. So here we go. All this time, as you can see, I'm trying to avoid stepping a lot in this, even though I'm wearing rubber boots. Just a precaution. All right, so there's some preorbital there. Put some here. Put some in over here. Throw our stick away. So now what do you want to do? We can do a lot of things here. I think what I'm going to do, so I don't have to keep coming back to this, and I think this is a great option. If you're just, you need something to recharge a spot with that you're hunting every now and again, the spray works great. Spray works great anyways, regardless. But in a situation like this where I'm not going to be back in here for quite some time, the beads. This is a time. This is a, a lifesaver. It's awesome because you can put this in, and you don't need to keep coming back. This will. This does your job for you. It releases the scent over a period of time. All right. You don't need to use the whole thing. I've done two scrapes with this right now and I still have plenty in there. And trust me, there is plenty in this that's going to hold scent for a long period of time. I'm looking at this not needing to be recharged until probably November 1st. You're not going to need to touch this. So this is going to sit here. It's going to be like a good cup of tea, if you drink tea. It's going to be steeping and make everything really good. 
We're going to get out of here. Our human scent will dissipate. This scent will stay here, and as these deer move through, they're going to start working these scrapes. Back in another time, and we'll take a look at this. We'll film it, and we'll show you how these change throughout the period of time when the deer start using them. You'll start noticing, once they start using this, you're going to start noticing all the, the fronds off these will start losing needles. They'll turn yellow. The sticks will start becoming smoother, and a lot of these smaller branches will be missing. But that will be happening pretty soon. So, on that note, we've got our beads in. Looks pretty good. There's your mock scrape for this year. Good luck tomorrow, guys. I hope everybody fills a tag.